Hi everyone, my name is Xin Yuan. The book I want to introduce today is called The Art of Choosing, written by Shina Langer, a renowned psychologist. As for me, I'm the person who has selective phobia. When I make choices, I need a long time to analyze each choice, and afraid that choices I exclude are the best one. So when I scanned the book list, I attracted by this book as soon as possible. I hope that it can help me to explore the secret of choosing. Actually, we make choices every day of our life, even every minute and every second. A survey with two thousand Americans revealed that the average number of choices that the typical American making in a typical day is about seventy. Every evening, we should choose which to wear, which to eat for breakfast, and take which transportations to work, and so on. Choices are the product of choosing. To some degree, choices define us and shape our lives. Making choices are not as simple as they look at, which actually is a complex process. But few of few of us pay attention to. This book will offer a thorough analysis of the implications of choices, and give us a direction to be a better chooser. Overall, this book is divided into seven chapters. Each of them focuses on a specific. Problem in the process of choosing. As for me, I choose the three of the most impressive topics for me to introduce. Now let's start. The first topic is related to the use of tool to make choices. Heuristics is one of the most common way we use, which refers to learning, discovery, or problem solving by experimental, and especially try and error methods for choosers. These methods can save time and energy, simplify the decision-making process, so that maximize the risk and increase their satisfaction. However, these methods also have four specific biases. The first bias is availability bias. The information which already exists in our memory would affect what we pay attention and consider. And the first and the last options. Would left the deepest impression in people's mind. Taking job interview as an example, it is not hard to find that the first and the last candidates will be given more attention. The second bias is presentation bias. It shows that the presentation in an negative way, like mention losses, would obtain more attention and agreement. The third bias is pattern bias. Our minds are easily to draw a connection between different information, which might lead to poor truths. And the last bias is confirmation bias, which means that the people make choices with data and a list of reasons. This sometimes will make them overlook some significant information. For instance. Tell me about yourself is a fixed question during the interview, so most candidates would prepare it carefully before the interview to ensure a good impression. Therefore, it is difficult for managers to identify their real self to decide whether this person is suitable for their company, so that arises a bias. Therefore, the use of some to help us make choose. Can be faulty. To be a better chooser, people must recognize their these biases and make preparations to avoid them. The second topic is about unlimited choices. Imagine a scenario: you stand in front in the front of the yogurt shelf. There are more than ten flavors for you to choose, and you are interested in most of them, but you can only afford one. What do you feel about that? It must be really worried, right? The key problem of this situation is that we have too many choices. To explain it, Shina and her team did a jam study. They put out six different flavors of jam or 
twenty four different flavors of jam in the extra of the supermarket to look at in which case were people more likely to stop and in which case were people more likely to buy a jar of jam. Sixty percentage of people stopped when there were twenty four and forty percent people stopped when there were six. And of the people who stopped when there are twenty four. Only three percent of them actually bought it, but of the people who stopped when there were six, thirty percent of them actually bought it. This study turns out that more choices people have, the worse decisions they will make. In the current society, this phenomenon is called the choice overload. An increase in the number of options did have a significant negative effect on participation. So, what can we do to address this problem? Four techniques can be applied. The first one is CART, getting rid of the extraneous alternatives. The German supermarket already is an excellent example for it. It only provides a limited range of selected products, but It is the ninth biggest retailer in the world today, and the second one is concretize. It will help people to have a better and vivid understanding of consequences associated with each choice. And the third one is categories. It allows people to ignore the unrelated options and focus on the most promising one. And the last one is gradually increase the complexity. The third topic is let others to help us to make choices. There is a famous study called the Julie Dilemma, in which participants read about the year child Julie, whom they had to image was their own child, and the experiment divides into three possible scenarios, and I have already put them in the slide. Researchers find that the second group, the informed non-choosers, expressed fewer negative emotions than the choosers from the third group. Surprisingly, the first group of uninformed non-choosers had just as many negative feelings as the choosers. So we can conclude that we often feel better when others make choices for us. But only if we are properly informed. In a word, people have the power to reduce the exhausting effects of choice, not by expanding options, but by finding others to help. But this method cannot erase the difficult、uh, choices. They can only prepare us better for the outcome. And only people having relative knowledge and reliable can undertake the position. In conclusion, making a choice is not as simple as we think. Just by weaving pros and cons of a given set of choice, in the process, we would influence by various factors and meet different biases. No one is a perfect chooser, but according to learn more about the choosing, choosing ability would be improved. And here are my recommendations. The first one is that normal method like heuristics is not as useful as we thought, so we should reduce the use of it and be careful about the result it given. Secondly, when we face too many choices, four techniques are useful. The first one is to cut. The second one is to concretize. The third one is to categorize. And the last one is gradually increase the complexity. And the last one is when we need to make some difficult choices, especially for an unknown field, asking the expertise for help may be better. That's all about my presentation. Thank you for watching.